Hello friends, welcome back to Chini World. Today I am going to explain you an action. Horror film from 2019, titled Escape Room. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The interior of a cozy, old-timey room can be seen. Suddenly, someone drops from the roof and runs toward a wall with a 10-number puzzle, requiring a four-digit code to get through. One of the walls starts moving in toward him and he panics as he looks for clues. He thinks he's found it in a book, but then he falls on the ground. He interprets the clue on four paintings in the room, but the wall is coming closer. The code he enters doesn't work so he starts panicking even more, screaming that there is no way out. His leg gets crushed by the wall. Three days earlier, Zoe can be seen walking to school. She's in class when the professor asks about the quantum Zeno effect. She's written down the answer in her notebook, but struggles to get her hand up to answer. The bell rings and the professor dismisses the class, but calls Zoe over to talk to her. He tells her that her paper was great and he tries to help her get out of her shell, by asking her to do one thing that scares her over the break. A motorcycle arrives in a business area, then we see Jason talking on the phone in his office. Closing a business deal. His assistant tells him he has another call, which Jason thinks is about a client giving him a gift. He's right and feels great about it. Then is labeling groceries. In the back of a store, when his boss comes in, he asks him for a new job position, but he doesn't want to give it to him. His boss tells him to stop drinking if he wants to move forward. Back at Jason's office, a gift arrives for him in the form of a black box. That looks like it can't be easily opened. Jason thinks his client sent it to him. Zoe goes back to her room and talks to her roommate, who isn't impressed by her nerdy rant and leaves. She's anxious and trying to calm herself, when it looks like her mirror is shaking. She experiences something like airplane turbulence, when suddenly she wakes from a nightmare, her roommate asking if she's okay. Before Zoe's roommate leaves for the holidays she finds a package in front of their room addressed to her and gives it to her, saying it's from her professor. The same black box is in her package too. Ben gets to work early and sees one of the black boxes waiting for him. He tries to open it, by hitting it and throwing it, when it suddenly opens by itself and he continues the process. Meanwhile, Zoe also tries to open the box and she figures it out quite fast. Simultaneously, Jason watches YouTube videos to help him open the box. The three of them succeed in opening the box when a piece of paper comes out of it. It's a voucher for my NOS escape room, which if escaped would win them $10,000. The next day, Ben is waiting in front of the Minos building, smoking, when a car parks behind him. Amanda comes out and they have a small exchange, when she eyes him about smoking. She walks inside, and gives the guard her ID as well as her phone, before she walks into the elevator. He thanks her for her service in the army. Danny walks into the elevator with her, last minute. He takes out a phone which he has sneaked in. Amanda walks into the waiting room first, where Mike, Jason and Zoe are already sitting. She goes to the reception desk, but the rest tell her not to bother. Danny walks in second to her, as Mike is ranting about a childhood pet with heterochromia. Jason and Danny have an exchange about the scar on Jason's hand, and Amanda asks Zoe if they know each other, because she seems familiar to her. Ben walks in last and greets everyone. Amanda reads a newspaper about a fire and gets anxious. Danny tells the rest that he has been to 93 escape rooms before. Jason messes with him about that, but Mike tells Danny that his nephew is just like him and that he was the one that suggested he tries the Minos room. Amanda says she is only there for the money. Danny explains to the rest how the rooms usually work and Zoe asks how the game starts. He tells her that they have to wait for the game's master to take them to the escape room. Ben stands up to smoke another cigarette, but the doorknob breaks off when he touches it. Mike goes over to try and fix it, but Danny thinks that they already are in the escape room. He comes over to the door and sees the oven dial. He says that it's probably a combination lock. So he tells everyone to look for clues. Everyone searches around the room. Zoe sees a mug with an airplane and Amanda finds the name Dr. Wooten Yu, thinking it might be a clue. Mike picks up a copy of Fahrenheit 451 and finds a screwdriver hidden inside of it. Zoe thinks that 451 might be the combination to the lock and inputs it in the door. Suddenly, the ceiling starts glaring red. They realize it's actually throwing off heat too. Zoe tries to turn off the dial, but it's stuck. Danny says that they can ask for a hint, so Amanda goes to ask at the reception. Jason finds a globe with a boat, which throws him off for a second, but then sees the lock on the window. Ben wants to break the window with a fire extinguisher, but when he sees that it's fake he throws it away. The four columns in the room start heating up too. Everyone is freaking out, except Danny and Zoe finds a key in the extinguisher. She opens the window and they see that the receptionist is actually a mannequin. 
Suddenly, the phone rings and they all expect Jason to pick up. The message is automated, saying they should follow the rules. When he drops the phone, the window shutters go up and more heaters appear. Zoe and Amanda go to get some water because Amanda is having an anxiety attack. Zoe sees the burns on her neck. The men are looking for clues, but have no idea what to do as the room is getting hotter. Zoe sees another clue about the coasters. On the table, she runs over to it and presses one of them which opens an exit in the ducts. The exit opens a little, so they all have to press the coasters simultaneously to open it completely. Jason goes in the duct and finds a way out. He needs the screwdriver that Mike has. So Amanda switches places with him and lets him through. Jason opens the other exit. The others send Amanda next through the vent, while they hold the coasters with both hands. Zoe gets another idea about the puzzle. She fills a glass of water and places it on the coaster, pressing it down. Meanwhile, Amanda panics as she's crawling through the duct. She has a flashback from her time in Afghanistan. Zoe hears her scream and the rest tell her to go after Amanda. Danny and Ben fill the glasses with water, but they're half a glass short. They argue a day. Burner comes down in the room. Ben pours his liquor in the glass and the exit opens. They escape in the last second as the room burns. They jump through the fireplace into the next room. Danny is still excited thinking all of it is still a safe game, but Amanda thinks that it was all real and wants to get out. Jason finds another lock and Danny tries to convince Amanda not to call the police. He still gives her the phone, but there's no signal. Meanwhile Zoe and Jason are looking for clues and he finds the first key to one of the locks on the door. Then he finds the second lock on the door, which needs a seven-letter word to open. They all try to figure out the words, when Ben sees animal skulls on the wall. He has a flashback in which he's driving drunk with his friends and sings Christmas songs. He tells the others to try with Rudolph and it works. Jason opens the door and they start walking outside of the house, but Zoe and Ben stay back. When the two of them exit the house, and it locks behind them, the next room looks like it's actually outside and it's really cold. Danny hits his head on the walls of the room, which are giant monitors. He falls on the ice. And it sounds like it's cracking. Danny is still convinced that the room is safe. Freezing air starts shooting through the vents. He tells the rest to look for clues again. Jason is the one to find the door. Zoe sees the phrase true north is a lie etched on a sled. Simultaneously, Mike finds a fishing rod on a tree and Ben is trying to light a cigarette. Amanda finds one coat and says that they'll share it, then gives it to Zoe. Ben falls into a fishing hole and Danny says that there might be a clue in the water. Suddenly Mike brings over the fishing rod. While the rest of them are trying to figure out the puzzle, Zoe finds a compass in the coat pocket. She follows it north, but remembers what she read on the sled and goes the other way. Zoe finds another clue in the mouth of a stuffed bear and comes back to the group as Ben walks off to smoke his cigarette away from them. Zoe attaches the clue, which is a magnet, to the fishing line and Mike drops it inside again. Jason asks for the coat. Mike gets something on the rod. But it's really heavy. They pull out a frozen cube with a key inside. Jason asks for Ben's lighter and he throws it at them, prompting Danny to get it. When he gets the lighter and turns around, he falls into the water and under the ice. The others see him and try to break the ice to get him. Eventually they lose sight of him and he drowns. Jason gives Amanda the coat, saying she was right that the game is real. Mike and the group attack Ben, thinking that it's his fault that Danny fell. They think he's the game's master. He starts insulting all of them. But Jason stops him and tells them that it's more important to survive. Then he tells them that they should use their body heat to get the key out of the ice. The temperature drops in the room. Jason has a flashback of himself on a boat with his friend wearing a red coat. Mike faints, but Jason gets the key out. They find the door and it opens behind them. As they start moving toward it, the ice breaks and they jump inside in the last moment again. The next room is a bar where everything is upside down. The room starts moving up and when it stops, the phone rings. Mike walks under the phone and it drops in his hand. There's a deafening noise and then music starts playing. Jason sees the door to the other room, but it's missing a doorknob. Mike notices the eight ball from the pool table missing and starts moving to look for clues, when the noise reappears and Ben stops him from falling over because a piece of the floor falls off. Amanda climbs the bar and finds a lockbox with four numbers. Zoe finds a sliding puzzle on the adjacent wall and climbs over the hole to it. Mike climbs over to her side too and helps her up. As she is solving the puzzle, another part of the floor falls off, almost taking Jason with it. Ben jumps over to the puzzle side and Zoe finally solves it. They figure out how to read it and get a four-digit code, but it doesn't work when Amanda inputs it in the lockbox. Another part of the floor falls and Mike and Ben grab onto the puzzle, but they're too heavy for it and it starts tipping over. Mike is too afraid to climb off, so Zoe does it and falls 
on the floor, hitting her head. They all call to her to get up when she has a flashback of an airplane accident she was in, calling to her mom. Jason wakes her up and gets her back on the wall. Zoe tells Amanda to try the code in reverse and it works. She finds the doorknob inside the lockbox. Another part of the floor falls off. Amanda jumps over to the pool table trying to get to the other side, but drops the knob on the last part of the floor, as she drops down as well. The noise starts again so she throws the knob to Jason and grabs onto the phone, swinging over the hole. She slips and falls. Jason opens the door and Mike follows him. Ben gets Zoe to go into the other room and stays with her to calm her. The next room looks like a hospital. They all begin looking through it, when they realize all of the hospital beds look familiar. Those are their beds when they were in the hospital. Zoe checks one of the other beds and sees that it's Amanda's. She was the sole survivor in an explosion. Zoe tells her own story as well. She was the sole survivor of a plane crash. Jason was the sole survivor of a boating accident. His story is that his friend lost his mind because of hypothermia and swam off. Ben shares that he as well was the only survivor in a car crash and Mike the only survivor in a mining accident. He has a flashback of the mine, as he tells them that his brother died in that accident. They start connecting all of their accidents to everything that was in the rooms. Zoe finds Danny's documents, he was a sole survivor in an accident as well. She thinks that the game is one of survival, to see who is the luckiest of the lucky. The TV starts playing and it shows a countdown to get out of the room. The three men start looking for ways to get out of the room. They find x-rays as clues, which Ben figures out are actually sign language and they mean EKG. Zoe starts smashing the cameras, thinking that if they keep watching them, the group won't be able to win. Jason finds the poison that will be released in the room when the countdown stops. Then finds the EKG machine, saying that the right heartbeat will open the doors. First he tries with Ben's heart rate, but when it doesn't work, he convinces Mike to try it as well. His heart rate is high, but not high enough. Jason wants to shock him to get his heart rate higher and manages to convince him to do that too. He gets his rate up, but ends up killing him. Ben is trying to revive Mike, as the poison starts filling the room and Zoe is still breaking the cameras. Jason attaches the EKG to himself and gets his rate low enough. The door opens. Jason goes out, but Zoe doesn't want to go. Ben follows Jason out. Through the vents and the door closes. Zoe is suffocating and crawling toward an oxygen mask. Jason and Ben make it to the other room and they start arguing. Ben accuses him that he not only killed Mike, but his friend on the boat as well. Jason tells him that surviving is a choice and continues to look for clues, finding a hatch. They both grab on the hatch and open it. Suddenly, they start hallucinating. There was poison on the handle and a puzzle on. The hatch tells them to find an antidote. Ben finds the antidote, but there's only one dose. Jason jumps him and they fight for it. Ben ends up killing Jason and injects himself with the antidote. Ben jumps into the other room. It's the same one from the beginning of the film. Meanwhile, the cleaning crew walks inside the hospital room and they think they've found two bodies. They find the oxygen mask hanging from the swing, when suddenly Zoe wakes up and knocks them both over. She grabs a gun from one of them and leaves the room. Simultaneously, Ben is at the other room, after he's messed up the code. He gets into the fireplace as the wall closes in and manages to escape the room. When he walks inside, a disembodied voice starts talking to him, telling him that his money were on Jason, the game's master. Appears telling him that he's won. Ben antagonizes him, but he just starts explaining what the point of the game is. The customers of the game are actually the most powerful people on the planet. And they want entertainment with real stakes. The man tells Ben that he didn't think it was possible for him to win as he gives him a cigarette. Then he tries to kill him, but Ben suddenly stabs him with the piece of wood that was stuck in his leg. The monitor shows that Zoe and the man are both still in play, then she comes out shooting at him. The man tackles her and almost kills her. When Ben knocks him over and then shoots him, the both of them walk out of the building. One day later, Ben is in the hospital and is in a stable state. Zoe is seen sitting by his side. A detective comes in the room and asks her to come with him. He takes her to the Minos building, which is surrounded by officers. When they walk inside, nothing of the rooms remain. The detective doesn't believe what she's telling him about the escape rooms. Because they haven't found any evidence. She sees the words no way out and realizes that it's an anagram for Dr. Wood and you. But the detective doesn't care and tells her they need to leave. Six months later, Ben and Zoe are having coffee. She shows him a file she's put together about the rest of their group and how their deaths were made to look like accidents. He tells her that she needs to let it go, but she continues explaining what she has found out about the game. 
Zoe had deciphered the logo and found out that it was the coordinates to a building in Manhattan. She's even bought the two of them plane tickets to get there. Ben doesn't like her plan. But ultimately agrees to go with her. A plane whooshes through the air with one engine on fire. A stewardess is looking for a clue and finds it in a bag. The tool doesn't open the cockpit door, but opens to another riddle. As the two stewards try to figure it out, a third one tells the passenger to brace for impact. The other two figure out the code and go inside the cockpit, only to find the pilot's dead. The stewardess tries to pilot the plane, but it crashes. Suddenly, two people appear and it becomes obvious that the plane accident was a simulation. A disembodied voice tells one of the people from the simulation that Zoe's and Ben's tickets were intercepted and that the game continues. Thanks for watching, please subscribe for more videos.